Hi guys, I filmed this video a ton of times already. Um, I've actually already edited the other half of this video and exported it, but the lighting was so bad, I think I'm just gonna start all over again. Um, basically, I'm gonna do products that are worth the hype, products that aren't worth the hype. I have already filmed the other half, but I'm gonna film this one, see how it goes, and then maybe real film the other one. Um, so let's assume that I'm gonna start with the um, negative, so we'll get that out of the way the products that aren't so worth the hype. I have in front of me uh, some cosmetics and nail polish type stuff, beauty tools, and then I have a couple of hair products to talk about at the end, but I'll start with this stuff first, because you know, this is the stuff we're really interested in, isn't it? Um, I'm gonna start with one of the most hyped beauty products that I'm aware of on YouTube blogging kind of um, atmosphere, if you will. Um, it's what people talk about a lot, and it is the Chanel what is it called now? Soleil Tan de Chanel. It used to be the Universal Bronze. And it's, you know, it's a cream bronzer. It's quite orangey. It's not fantastic for travel. It's very expensive. And I think that part of the reason that it's so overhyped is it's often out of stock. And last year, there was a period where it went totally out of stock and everybody wanted it. And it's, it's one of those things, you create that frenzy and if something, if you can't get something, all of a sudden it must be, everybody wants it, it must be amazing, you need it, and they're clever with the marketing strategy. I would imagine they had a lot of these, um, and that that was kind of a ploy to get people talking about it again. Um, I can understand the hype behind this. I like cream bronzers, it lasts quite a long time. It is quite natural, though, it's quite orangey. I think, you know, it's not too bad. Um, but it's just... It's not amazing, it's not like, oh my god, I need this in my life. If this runs out, if this ever runs out, which I don't think it's going to, I won't repurchase it. I actually have a NARS um, multiple stick in Malaysia, which is very, very similar, a little bit more um, natural looking for me, a bit more neutral bronze, um, and I much prefer that. I just think the application of it is better, it comes in a stick, you know, you can put it on where you want it, and then you can blend it out with your fingers or with a brush, and I just prefer it. And I've had that for longer, and again, I can't see myself using that up too, 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 anytime soon. Um, but yeah, this is overhyped for me. I I don't use it that much at all, and I just I'm not that impressed. So I wouldn't say that it's a must-have by any means. Um, a couple of products I have here that I got whilst I was in America. I think there's only two, maybe there might be three. Yeah, there's three products here that I got in America. The first one is Physicians Formula. And it's the Happy Booster Blush. This is the one that Emily Noel talks about all the time and absolutely loves. And I actually brought one of these back for Laura Loves Beauty and she loves it as well. But I just don't love it. It's like... I'm really, really disillusioned with the packaging. I mean, for one thing, I've hardly used it at all. And look at this. This is the, this is the pan. You're not going to be able to see this, are you? You can, like... The pan is wobbly. I need to move this down so you know it's not that... That's the actual thing in the pan. So I'm probably going to depot this because it's like falling out of the thing as it is. Um, the first few layers were super glittery and I used it and I hated it just because there was so much glitter that comes off. I must admit, once the top layer comes off, it's not that bad. But you don't get, like, there's not a lot of colour. As much as I like not a lot of colour, there really is so little payoff. And it's just so, so, so hyped that I just... I hardly ever reach for it and um, it's something that I really, really wanted. So I think this is massively overhyped. Um, another thing that I got in the States was the CoverGirl Lash Blast Volume. I don't know if this is the original because volume is different. Um, it's basically the same thing as the Max Factor version. And this is the worst wand I've ever seen for anything. It's a really fat wand, but it's tiny, tiny bristles. I can't get any kind of anything there we are, finally focused. I can't get any kind of anything with this. Annoyingly, I bought brown, because when I buy mascara, I don't look at the colour. I assume they're all black. Of course, there are some brown, blue, etc. Um, but that doesn't really affect the fact that it does nothing to my lashes whatsoever. People love this. Just be aware, it's not for everyone. I have rubbish eyelashes, and so few products really do it for me. And this is definitely not one of them. Um, Dream Bouncy Blush. Have we got these in England yet? I don't know. It's one of those things that... I think if I'd loved it, I would know that, um, but I don't love it. And I got this again in March. It's in Hot Tamale. Loved the idea of these. Loved the idea of these. And, you know, you get to push it down. It's kind of play doughy, but it's not what I expected. It's like, 
you get quite a lot of colour but it's really cream to powdery and I think I think this would be great if you can see here it looks really patchy there's patches that are a lot darker than others I think it would be really really great if you had perfect skin and you were applying it to just like freshly moisturised skin it would be great but when you're applying it over the top of a foundation I find that cream blushes are really tricky to get on like to layer rather than just to wipe off what you've already got on and replace it with this which then leaves this odd kind of separated makeup look and this does a really bad job of that in my opinion um, some people might love this I think this is massively overhyped people were like you need to buy these bounty blushes but it's they're really not amazing um, something else I got kind of around that time um, and around that time was massively hyped was the Revlon lip butter I've actually got a few of these and I never ever ever wear them this is lollipop I believe this is probably the one that I would wear the most because it's super super bright pop of colour. Everybody bought this when it came out. Really, really nice. This is the best example of a lip butter. The rest of them are all like, so what? It's really patchy, sticky for me. I think I think they're sticky. Lots of people are like, no, they're really moisturising, they're like a balm. They're not, in my opinion, they're not at all. If you've tried the L'Oreal Caress, which is much more what I thought this was going to be, that is much, that is much more kind of up my alley. And um, I don't know if it's just a matter of opinion and just the, you know, my personal preference that I don't prefer these. Um, I just, I was massively disappointed with them because with a lip butter, I thought they were going to be really nourishing and moisturising and more kind of like a balm and they're really not at all. So massive disappointment for me. Another hugely hyped product, I don't know why I keep saying that because that's what this video is all about, is Benefit They're Real. And this is like a love-hate product for me. I love what it does to my lashes. It doesn't do that much more than the Volume Million lashes though. It's, it's great, it does do something, and there are a handful of mascaras that I've ever used, no matter how much I've paid, that I actually really like what they do to my lashes because my lashes are rubbish. But they don't, it doesn't do enough more than my L'Oreal to warrant the amount of time and effort it takes to remove. This is worse than any waterproof mascara that I've ever ever worn. It's the most stubborn eye makeup ever. It's just the most annoying thing. And that's, that is 100% of the reason that I think it's a disappointing product. I think that it's not worth the hype because yes, it does something great to my lashes, but it doesn't do something great that other products can't do. And then it's such a pain to remove, but it's not waterproof. Yeah. Um, so I like this. I will continue to use it till it runs out, but I will not be repurchasing that because it's so annoying. Um, I have two nail polishes and a tool left, so I'll talk about this first, and it's the Shu Yumera, Shu, Shu Yuamura, Shu Yuamura, that one, um, eyelash curlers, don't buy these, end of story, um, these, <laughs> I thought these were great, when I first got them, I tried them on my eyelashes obviously, I was like, wow, they killed my eyelashes, but then I tried some other ones and they killed my eyelashes as well, and half an hour later, my eyelashes aren't curly anymore. What was the point? What is the point in curling your eyelashes? I get it. Like, if you're taking photos or something, then yeah, okay. But you curl your eyelashes in the morning, you do your mascara, and then you leave the house, and they don't look curled anymore. What an unnecessary step, in my opinion. Does anybody know how to make it last longer? Please let me know. When I was a kid, I remember I used to put them on the radiator, on the top of the radiator to heat them up. But they never last long at all. And again, I don't know if this is just me, let me know in the comments, but it doesn't matter how expensive the eyelash killers are, if they do something amazing and it only lasts for half an hour, then what was the point? I'm not going to continue to kill my eyelashes all day. I'm just not going to do that. So yeah, overhyped. Um, my last two products are nail polishes, and I want to mention these just because they are quite expensive and I love them, but they chip so badly. Um, this is probably the most inexpensive nail polish I've ever bought. I think it was like £16 for a basic nude colour. The only reason I bought it, it was because it was called Waking Up in Vegas. This is when I thought I was going to get married in Vegas and I was absolutely like Vegas crazy. I was buying everything. Um, Lady Gaga wore this on the cover of Vogue, I believe, and it was amazing. Just looked really polished and gorgeous and really nice. It's a lovely colour, but you can get it for cheaper somewhere else and it won't chip after two hours. This is the worst chipping nail polish ever and it is so expensive. I would say the Deborah Lippmann colours, it's only worth buying if you get one of the really special glitters because um, that's going to go over a normal colour anyway and you just feel like you're getting more for your money. The basic colours from her are totally a waste of money. 
complete waste of money. I did get Razzle Dazzle in my glossy box at Christmas though and I absolutely love that. Um, so I'm not saying that Deborah Lippmann across the board is not worth the money, I'm just saying don't go and buy the basic colours that you can get duplicates of on the high street. Um, and the last one is the OPI Nail Lacquer in my private jet. This is one of my favourite nail polishes of all time. It's just so unique. It's supposed to look like a runway at night time, I think. Kind of like all the little bits of sparkle in it and it's just, it's the most unique colour. I haven't seen anything else like this. It's just amazing. An amazing fall colour. I'll probably still wear it this autumn. Um, winter kind of season but it chips again within a day it's kind of an evening out it is an evening out polish in that you can only wear it for one night however when you go out you generally chip your nails so yeah if you wear it probably all day at an event or something then maybe that would be better but it's just it doesn't matter what base top coat I've used it always chips so quickly so I will be trying some different things I've not tried the Essie one with it yet um, I'll be trying some different base and top coats with it uh, this season, but I love 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 this and it's just such a disappointment that it chips so easily Okay, my last couple of products are hair and skincare. I'll talk about the hair stuff first of all um, First is this Philip Kingsley elasticizer. I've mentioned this before I did a blog post and I'll link it below if I've mentioned anything and I can remember I will link the blog post below because a lot of the time it's just a lot more detail um, I got a little sachet of this or a little tube or something in um, a glossy box and I reviewed it and I didn't like it and Philip Kingsley contacted me and said we think that you would like it if you used it in the right way we'll send you a big tub and this is the Elast Elasticizer Extreme as well let me see if I even... it smells quite nice um, I've still got a little bit left in the bottom I think next time I have my hair highlighted I'll probably use it again just because just because. Um, but I don't think it does anything. It's a pre-shampoo treatment. You put it on your hair when it's wet, you cover it with like cling film or a, um, a what? What is the word I'm looking for? Shower cap. Um, and you're supposed to leave it on for however long before you uh, wash and condition your hair like normal. And it just didn't do anything. Lots of people are like, wow, my hair is amazing. And I don't know if my hair wasn't damaged enough, but when my hair was really terribly damaged, it still didn't touch it. So it doesn't work on slightly damaged hair. It doesn't work on really damaged hair. Maybe there's a middleman. Maybe there's like a kind of hair that it does work for because some people seem to absolutely adore it. And like I say, leave a comment if you feel differently because skin and hair care are so personal preference and so down to like the individual. Um, but it didn't work for me at all. It, was, it would have been a complete waste of money had I spent my own money on it. Um, and the other hair product is the Three Minute Miracle, and I'm just going to leave it there. This is the Reconstructor, but I use the Miracle, not Miracle Moist. Is it called Miracle Moist? I don't know. Let's say it's called Miracle Moist. I think it might be. Um, the kind of moisturising shampoo and conditioner. This Reconstructor, or any of the Three Minute Miracles that I've tried, aren't any better than the. Is it Miracle Moist? Let's, okay, let's say it's Miracle Moist. Um, the moisturising conditioner from the range. And it's more expensive. I just don't think it's worth the money at all. I like um, kind of the squeezy end. This is a completely full one because I bought them when they won three for two and then I ended up not liking it very much. I'll still use it, but it's no better than the conditioner is what I'm saying. And um, yeah, this is just no better. So I wouldn't use this again. I would probably just continue to buy the shampoo and conditioner, which I'm going to be using again soon because they are my favourite. This is so annoying. The, the focusing it out. I think it's because of the computer in the background, which I wanted to turn it off, but I can't just turn the screen off because it's all one computer. And I'm uploading something, I think. I don't know. So it just, it was not going to the screensaver like it normally would. Um, okay, last two products. Forgot what I was doing then. Last two products. The Ginvera Green Tea Whitening Marvel Gel is one of them. And this, again, was a PR sample that was sent to me. It's supposed to be a blackhead remover. People rave about this and I just am not impressed at all. It doesn't really, I used to think it really, really softened my skin, but it doesn't really do anything anymore and I just, I don't know. Again, this is quite expensive, this is about £20 and I think your £20 could be spent better elsewhere. Um, again, I will really, really try to list everything. If I don't list it in, an, in the actual thing below, I'll do a whole separate blog post and list everything. Um, but apologies if I forget, let me know. Um, and the last one is the Kiehl's Lip Balm number no. 1 and I thought this would be amazing. When I was pregnant I had such dry lips, the worst, and um, I bought this thinking this will fix them 
and it's rubbish. It's basically just like flavoured Vaseline. It smells and tastes like mango. Amazing, really, really nice. But it's just like Vaseline. It is petroleum jelly, basically. Um, yeah, it's got the teeniest bit of lanolin in it, I believe. Uh, but I think perhaps I will try lips next, because that's supposed to be really great, but maybe that will be in one of these videos as well. If you think that I've missed anything out, please leave me a comment below and I'll do a follow-up video because I was going through all my stuff and thinking um, what has been hyped, what hasn't been hyped, and um, I couldn't think. So all the stuff that I've collected together for this video, maybe I need to make another one. Let me know. Um, but thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please go subscribe. I actually did upload some bloopers um, from when I initially tried to film this video when Milo was knocking around and it just didn't work at all. Um, so I will link the bloopers at the end for you to go and see if you'd like to. And, oh, it's finally decided to go to screensaver at the end of the video. That's nice and nice. Um, but I will see you in my next video. Bye. Did you manage to get into the video? Then.